Welcome to the Australian Finance Podcast, a podcast for people who want to learn more about their personal finances and get the most from their money. This series is hosted by Kate Campbell from How To Money and Owen Raskovich from Rask Finance. The Australian Finance Podcast is provided for educational purposes only. The information is general in nature and does not take into account your needs, goals or objectives. What that means is the information does not apply to you specifically. So consider getting the advice of a licensed and trusted professional before acting on the information. Welcome to Episode 7 of the Australian Finance Podcast, Kate. Hi, Owen. Today, we're talking about superannuation and making sure you have a super super. And we're going to talk about all kinds of good stuff like why you need to take notice of it, the simple ways to change how to check for fees and insurance, and how to get a little bit more out of it. Mm, And and why you should care about it, even though you probably can't touch it for 40 or 50 years. Well, yeah, so that's right. We'll talk about how money goes in and how it comes out and what exactly it does. And we'll try and keep it short and concise and a little bit fun and enjoyable as we go. Yeah. So did you want to tell people what super is or shall I? Uh, I think you you can best sum that up. Okay. So super, it's a lot of mystery around it. It sounds like this should be a guy with a cape that's that's like doing something, but it's really not that bad. So a super fund is really just a a fancy bank account and your money goes from typically straight from your employer if you're uh, earning a sufficient amount of money. And what I mean by that is typically over $450 a month, Mm -hmm. or if you're under 18 and you're working full time, you should get super. You'll see it appear on your bank statement. I'm um, not on your bank statement, on your payslip, because the employer will pay that as part of your wage. And it's around about 10%. 9.5% is the current rate, but that's increasing over the next few years. And it goes that money goes into a separate account managed by a super fund, which is like a company. Mm. Think of it like a company. And they invest in all different types of stuff. So we talked about it in the last episode, how chances are if you've got super, you're already an investor and you don't know. Yeah. The super fund will invest on your behalf so you're what we call a, a beneficiary of that money, but you don't own it in your own legal mm. right. So it's not in your name. You don't have to fill out forms. A super yeah. fund does that for you. And you'll get it at a certain time later on in life. So how old do you normally have to be to get super? Do you know? I think it was 65 or 70. The, the government seems to be pushing it back further and further. The answer is it depends. And it's confusing. So I find super to be a very confusing thing and unnecessarily confusing thing. Basically, all you need to know is money goes in and money comes out, but you do have some control over what happens in the middle there. One of the reasons that people like to use super is exactly that reason, is because it's kind of hands-off and you can put your money in, let them deal with it, and then just get it later in life. It's kind of like a forced savings, right? But if you don't know where the money is or where it's invested, there's a chance and a very high likelihood that it could be invested incorrectly. Yeah. Like if you're a young person and you're investing in the wrong things, those are your best years for saving yeah. and investing. And it might be a bit too conservative for a, a 40, 50 year investment time frame. That's right. So if, you, if you're if you 21 years of age and you just happen to be up late one night and you check your super fund statement and you, uh, you see that you're invested in things like bonds or even property or things like cash accounts, you should probably call your super fund because you really shouldn't be invested in that sort of stuff. Conversely, if you're 65 years old, you're about to retire, you've just popped a bottle of red and you're sitting on the couch <laughs> and you're looking at your super statement and you find that you're 100% invested in shares, that's probably another red flag. So you probably want to call your super fund again. But ultimately, it's a really easy way to invest. We touched on some of the, mm-hmm. the ways to invest last time, uh, in the last episode rather. Kate, can you say, or can you tell us, What's an easy way to check if you're being paid super, if your employer is doing the right thing? Well, once you've you've ascertained that your employer actually is paying you super, so check your pay slip and uh, it'll usually say where it's going. Um, and if you didn't set it up yourself, you'll need to find talk to your HR department mm-hmm. or if you're just a small company, your, your boss, um, and work out where they're sending the default superannuation if you didn't tell them your super account because uh, you'll just need to get some account details and then you'll be able to log in. Yep. Um, but once you once you get those account details log in, you'll be able to see on the website of the super company every transaction that's been incoming into your account and fees that might be coming out. Mm. Um, so then I uh, some of the super companies have apps now 
Um, so you'll be able to just see and some send notifications, which I think oh, is cool. quite good to say you've been paid your super for this month. So cool. it's definitely important to check. Um, sometimes I think small businesses have, they can pay less, the same amount, but still less often. So I think it's yeah. quarterly. They yeah. So there's a bit of, frames. there's a bit of, uh, I suppose, leeway for the different, yeah. um, businesses to pay it, but Typically, you'd want to see money going in every three months. Yeah. And it's definitely mm. just because an employee has to do it doesn't mean they're necessarily doing the right thing. And sometimes when small businesses, especially even large ones, are under financial stress, they uh, conveniently forget to pay employees superannuation. That's right. They do. Uh, you know, I'm going to drop some truths on you right now and say that most young people that work in a cafe or a casual store or something that's not a big brand, I would be checking your superannuation fund yeah. ASAP because I was at a Melbourne uni thing last week and this girl come up to me and she was probably 20 and she said, oh, I've just found out my super, my employer's not paying my super fund. She worked for a cafe. She goes, this is the second employer that's done that to me. So there you go. So she's mm. only 20 and she's had that done twice to her. Um, and the easiest way to check is to go, like you said, to the super fund direct. So you just bypass yeah. the employer and just go straight to where the money should be going. Yeah. Well, I guess you've got to find out which oh, got to find super out. fund yeah. the employer is actually sending That's the right. money to. Yeah. And just on that, you should, if you haven't already done so, you should have got a statement to select your yeah. super fund in the first, I think it's the first 30 days, they have to give you a form to say yeah. which super fund um, you want to go with. And if you don't select one, they'll pick one for you. Yeah. And, you and can, it might not be the best one. Sorry. That's right. That's right. There's plenty of resources. We'll link to some in the show notes of some research on some dodgy yeah. um, super funds as well as some good ones. And your employer doesn't necessarily know oh, that's right. yeah. what's best for you. So they're just going to pick a default option. They might just pick whatever super funds advertising at the moment. So that's right. Um, definitely not. They're not. Don't believe that they're just picking the best one. They're just picking whichever one. Uh, I should also say that if you are a, if you work in a particular industry, you may end up with an industry super fund or if you work for a particular company, like a big company, like say, I'm just going to use an example. I don't know if this is actually the case, but say if you work for Woolworths, Woolworths might have an agreement, say with someone like AMP or mm. a bank to use their super fund. So it's yeah. going to be quite difficult to wiggle out of that, mm. but there are ways around it. And that's a bit what we call an enterprise bargaining agreement. And you may automatically be put into one of those, mm. but just check, just know where your money's going. This is your future um, one dollar now could be twenty dollars in thirty years or fifty in yeah. fifty. So just take note of where it's going. Mm. So let's let's put ourselves in the shoes, Kate, of someone that's let's let's use this girl the other day. She's yeah. um she's got she doesn't know where her money's going. Let's say she's done a bit of research and she wants to change super funds. How should how would she do that? Well, generally, once you've worked out where your super fund is and you've got the account numbers and all the details set up. Um, you can actually roll over the super fund into the next fund you've chosen. Uh, so you do need to choose somewhere for the money to go. You can't just send it to your own bank you account. Can't just go, you send um, it you to can't have, ING account. You don't get personal <laughs> possession of the money. So you're going to have to identify the new super annu superannuation fund you want to roll over to. And generally, I'm pretty sure the new fund wants the money. So they'll help you with this process and they'll provide you with the documentation to get the process rolling. Right. So if you say, I want to go, I've got $10,000 in super and I want to take that to Superfund X, I would go to Superfund X and say, this is how much I've got. Can you bring it across for me? I think that's how it works. I haven't personally done this process myself, yeah. but. Yeah, right. Okay. I, that, I know for certain that that's one way you can do it for yeah. sure. The other way is you can create a MyGov account, so my.gov account. Yeah. It's like the Australian government's version of like your all-in-one account. Yeah. So it's got like uh, Centrelink. Sometimes takes hours ATO, and hours to work out how to use. But uh, yeah, super. It's got everything. I use it because I can see I can, I've got access to all of my tax returns. Yeah. It's got any Medicare benefits you can file mm. through there. It'll tell you your hex debt as well. That's hex one debt, interesting yep. thing I discovered when I finally got it yep, to work. That's scary. <laughs> so you could do that. Uh, but you, yeah, you can create a MyGov account. And that's how I consolidated. So yeah. I had like a bunch of different ones. Like I had like the military super, uh, yeah. I had rest super from when I was uh, <laughs> uh, like working in retail. And then I just wanted to change them all over. So I just did it all from there and you can just do it with like yeah. a few clicks of a button. Uh, and that's good because it integrates with the ATO. Mm. So if there's something dodgy going on, the ATO may be able to see what's going on. Yeah. And often if you log into your superannuation provider, they'll have a tool there that says, search for lost super because mm -hmm. um, it's in their best interest to help you 
increase yeah, your they funds want your money. with them. They want your money. So you can do search for Lost Super and they use your details, your TFN to find anything in your name. And even if you've just created an account and haven't put anything in there, it'll come up on the list because I've done a few tests once just to see the process and it's, okay. suddenly it comes up on the list. You've got these accounts even if there's no money. But then oh, right. it's a good way to sort of find out using their free tools. I Most Super accounts. Yeah, I imagine they would. That. I know the big one that I'm with. They, I won't yeah. say who it is, but they, yeah, they offer that service too. Uh, and if you're confused, you can just call them, right? Mm. Like it's, you know, we love doing everything online and yeah, automatic. But you can plenty just call of people them. pay to take your calls. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So let's say again, I'm changing my super fund, and I look at this one, and it looks like it's done really well. Should I rely on that or? So if they're, they're probably promoting their one-year returns and if you're looking at a 40-year time frame, it, the one-year return is not really important. You want to have a look at since inception ret- returns. So I'll usually say SI or maybe they'll just tell you 10 years, but you really want to have a look at that long as long of a time frame as possible because mm. your money's going to be there for 40 years. So you really want to have a look at that long-term return and what they've done um, and also have a look at what's in the product. So if... If you're investing for 40, 50 years, you can afford to take a bit more risk as a young person, I I think. So mm. um, you don't really need to be 50% of your money in cash when you've got 40 years to go. There's a few things there. You know, it's just don't go for the one that's necessarily the best performing from one yeah. year to the next. And the and other thing is... Yeah, they'll often just default you to the balanced option and yep. maybe that's right for you and maybe it's not, but definitely have a look and make a conscious decision if you're going to stay in it or if you're going to choose a different risk profile. Shameless self-promotion, but I'll put a link in the show notes. I've, I think I did a video a few months ago about knowing what's aggressive, what's yeah. defensive, etc. So I'll put that in the show notes. But that can help you just understand what we mean by defensive, aggressive, conservative, yeah. etc. And then you can go onto the Superfund's website and just make sure that they have the option. Mm. Chances are if you're a younger person, you're gainfully employed and um, you've got a long-term investment horizon, yeah. you could probably go more aggressive strategy which um, you know, you, you'll be able to find on the super company's website or fund's website if they have that option available, yeah. and most of them do. And uh, some cash options have been shown to go backwards after taking out fees over the long term. There so, you go. Uh, so you're talking careful. about the, the defensive risk-averse type yeah, ones, Yeah, right? well, sometimes you can even just go full cash, which is... Right, so 100% of your money in super invested in cash. Yeah. Yeah, right. And okay. you're, you're probably going backwards. That sounds crazy to me, but hey, yeah. who am I? Uh, okay, so another thing that... Uh, we were talking about off air just a moment ago is um, super fees. Mm. Well, I they, should say uh, are because there's everything, of them. everything, all shapes and sizes of fees. So yeah. it's, uh, and they won't, they won't promote them unless maybe they're really low, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And they can, they can change them. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've got to say, right. The, the industry has been slow to respond to lower fees, but they are coming and they mm. have for some, I won't say the name because I can't be seen, heard doing this, but uh, there is a super fund out there that has no fees. So it's got mm-hmm. like no, like when I say no fees, no investment fees. It's still got like an admin fee that you need yep. to pay. It's like hundred bucks a year or something. But there are super funds out there that charge literally next to nothing. So um, it's really easy to shop around. There's some comparison websites yep. out there, which we'll link to that you can use to shop around. Uh, there's a heap of different fees. Yeah, probably the, the the three big ones, and you probably won't remember them, but we'll put some links <laughs> in the show notes if you do need to go back over them. The big one is an admin fee, so most super yeah. funds, and they might tell you it in a per annum, so they might say it's X amount for the year, or they might say X amount per month. That's right. So there'll be, yeah, there'll be a fee. It might say you know ten bucks a month or. Yeah. Yeah, Five bucks. two bucks a week or something, whatever. Yeah. So you could you be able to compare that one. That's the one that you pay regardless of what strategy you go with. Mm. But then that, once you get inside the super fund, depending on which strategy you go with, there'll be a fee for that. Yeah. So if you're in a risky one, if you're in a conservative, yeah, a balance, you choose something a bit more exotic. That's right. Yeah, you could be up for different level, different fees. So if you think about it, there's a fee for the type of strategy you choose. Mm. Finally, and this one that's this is one that's kind of evaporated it's just disappeared yeah. but it's still in some of um, the bank run funds is a thing called an investment fee and this is a percentage and it it's effectively you're paying the super fund for the expertise to invest with yeah. other investors which kind of doesn't make sense it's like two layers of fees so mm-hmm. it's an investment fee take a look if you've been charged them you probably don't need to be uh those are the common types of fees but there's heaps yeah. the easiest way to find it is to go to what's called the PDS, so... Product Disclosure Statement. Yeah, 
punch in. Uh, now they're massive documents, but Control F helps yeah, them. Control F, in this yes. Case. Control F or um, Command F. Yeah, it's just Mac. full of legal jargon. Yeah, that's right. But there is one section, and it's, yeah, I'm going to off the top of my head. I think it's always, almost always under the fees and costs. Yeah, which is number seven in the PDS. Oh, okay, and it's got an example. So yeah. almost all of them have to use the same format. So you can get, compare apples to apples, and you can yeah. be like. Okay, this is exactly what the cost is for fifty thousand. What's it on the other one? <laughs> and you can Google, so it'd be like super fun name and PDS, and then it'll come up with like a PDF, yeah. and you'll be able to download that and have a look. Uh, otherwise, just use a comparison website. Yeah, and they'll often use a table and break down the different fees. So most websites do that. They're trying to make it easier. They're trying to make it easy for you to switch and all yeah. the rest of it. Okay, so we've talked about the things you look for: fees, performance, mm. strategy. Um, how to find and how to change yeah. super funds. Now, insurance and super is yes. something you did yes. talk about quite a bit in our insurance episode that we'll mm. link to in the show notes. Yes, there we did a, a full video, a full video, a full podcast on insurance. And um, what, just quickly, what we talked about were the three different types of insurance, which is income protection, uh, life insurance, so if you can't it. Uh, and TPD, which is total permanent disability. Obviously, you don't want that to happen. Uh, so those are the three that you can have inside super. The thing is that there's a chance that your insurance is costing you a lot more than the actual fees you pay for the super fund. Yeah. So if you have multiple super funds, you yeah. need to make sure you're not paying multiple insurances because you can't you don't, claim... Yeah, don't typically. get multiple payouts. That's right, yeah. So make sure if you do have multiple super funds, that's probably just killing you in fees yeah and especially if you're not working for a while you might want to consider just adding a small amount to the fund just to cover those that's right yeah. insurance good point just so you don't go backwards that's right so i had it's just a little bit to go towards my insurance yeah um just i just add that in and it's just just helps to take down that because that money that you pay for your insurance is coming from the super fund and i don't want my yeah. retirement to be put on hold because i uh, have a lot of insurance. Yeah, and especially low balances, fees and insurances can eat up eat up the balance pretty quickly. That's right. And uh, I mean, there's some rules about young people insurance, but uh, I wouldn't rely on the super fund yeah. not giving you insurance. So just check that. And uh, these, these super fund companies are huge. They don't really know who you are individually. They're just doing everything on bulk scale. So if you, if you want something, make an effort and talk to them about what you want, what you need, and they'll be able to help. Mm. So my dad always tells me this joke, and it's kind of like a weird one, but he says, uh, the average person has less than two arms. And it's true, right? Like there's some people that have one arm or no arms, right? So the average person has less than two arms. And it's like with super, they just go with the average thing. Yeah. And it might not make any sense to you at all because, you know, your situation might be totally different. So just yeah. take a look. Normally the, the insurance that you have inside super is way too low in my opinion. Some will disagree with me, but I think it's way too low. So especially if you have some sort of financial responsibility, like a mortgage or kids, um, take a look. Yeah. Okay. So Kate, if I wanted to add more money to super, why would I do that and how would I do it? Uh, so there is some tax sort of concessions if you're adding money to super. you. Mm. Um, if you do it, you can ask your HR or employer to increase the amount that goes out of your paycheck to super mm. um, and it's taxed differently. Um, or you can add money after tax and then claim back the difference in tax in your tax return. So that's a bit pretty, more paperwork. Yeah, so that's actually what yeah. I did the other year. Um, I had oh, right. added some money throughout the year just randomly when I just felt the urge and yep. then um, had to fill in a, a couple of page form, take it to the bank, blah, blah, blah. It's a bit of a process, but um, hmm. you can claim it back for your tax return, but it's it does make it a bit more complicated. Okay. So you would, so there's obviously, uh, we're not accountants, but there's a tax benefit potentially for adding money to super. Yeah. Um, this is a really good one for self-employed people. You can claim a tax deduction. Pretty much anyone can nowadays, actually. Well, unless you're really old or not working, but uh, pretty much anyone can. Mm. You can you can deposit money in like BPay or direct deposit, and then yeah. And if you go to the Super Funds website, they'll usually have a pretty clear button on add more money because uh, that's what they want you to do. That's right. And then there's yeah, uh, you'll be able to download this form that you got to fill out and then send it off. Mm. Um, so you can claim the tax deduction, but it's a good way to save for retirement. Yeah. Uh, especially for self-employed people, I'm self-employed. Uh, I have been for a very long time. I know plenty of tradies. 
um, who don't receive super, but they add extra, so it's a really good thing. Um, one more thing is that people probably add super, add two super because they don't have to invest in their own name. Yeah. It's a very easy way. There's a lot of really mm. good financial advisors and financial planners out there who say that it's a really good way to invest money. Yeah, and if you want to make completely no decisions, I mean, if you and you want to do a bit better than cash, then yeah, super is a good option. Yeah, that's right. Okay, but there are limits, so we won't get bogged down in the details, but there are limits to how much you can put in each year and the rules get really complicated. Obviously, we're just trying to give you the information here, but if you add more than, you know, say 25000 or 20000 just be really careful. And that includes the amount that comes from directly from your employer. Yep. Just be really careful with that. Talk to your accountant. Normally, your accountant is a better one to go for for tax issues and your financial planner or advisor is a better one to go for for everything else. And the government love to play around with the super system and oh. introduce new schemes, take out schemes, change things, change up the industry. So just really keep an eye mm. out on what's going on and actually just talk to your super company or your tax accountant or yep. your advisor um, for what the most recent rules, regulations yeah. are because it we've seen so many changes just in the last few years. Yeah, that's right. Or you can visit the ATO website. That's a really good resource. I like that one. Yeah, and they have quite a good section on yeah. the super. But one thing uh, I should – yeah, you're talking about changes. I, uh, I dropped this whole strategy, this like financial plan – and I did it right around the end of the financial year. And then I had to go back and update the whole thing. It's like 150 pages. I had to go back and update the whole thing again. And I counted. There were 13 changes to super rules in one year. <laughs> wow. I was like, if I'm going to put all my money in super for 50 years, how many changes are there going to be? Yeah. And that comes back to this thing about, there's probably the one criticism of super is that you can't get it until you're old yeah. or something happens. Uh, not old, old, but like you, you can't get it until you're, you know, mm. in your twilight years. So... That's a criticism. There's a lot of change. There's a lot yeah. of water that goes under the bridge between now and then for some people. Okay. Let's say, Kate, let's say that your partner is earning $100,000 and you're at home with the kids. You know, what do you do? Is there any option for male or female being at home with the with the kids? Yeah. So I there is splitting of your super contributions. Mm. Um, so that can certainly be done. Um, of course, you can actually just make a contribution at any time. So mm. if you have savings or your partner's income, you can just chuck in some money into your super at any time. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's um, that's one thing that a lot of people don't know is that you can, even the money that goes direct from your employer, Yeah. you can actually split that money. Mm. So you can split that uh, with your partner so it's what we call in financial planning language it's what we call equalization so it's like a very fancy yeah fancy word <laughs> fancy word for just saying that they're just even yeah uh, you can you can do that you can just add money directly uh, and there are a few other incentives and we just wanted to touch on these very quickly because there's so many different rules but you can uh, take advantage of something called a government co-contribution which is for people that earn less than fifty two thousand or thereabouts and effectively, the government will just add a little top up for you if you've added some. Yes, if you've you have, that's yep. the rule. You have to add some to get the the benefit. Yeah. The next one is a low income super tax offset. Well, that's a very complicated <laughs> piece of language. So basically, it's uh, if you earn under thirty seven thousand, the ATO should automatically top up some yeah. of your super, or they just pretty much meant they just pretty much don't tax you. So it's not like they're doing a favor. They're just yeah. like, ah, oh, we won't tax you a little bit this year. It's it's a small amount, but it all adds up in the long run. Uh, there's another one if you're a little bit older and you own a home, you can potentially transition some of that money into super and not get taxed for it. So if you own a home, you could put some of that money away. And the last one, which is a, probably a video, a, a, I said a video a few times now, it's uh, a, probably a podcast in itself, Yeah. which is the first home super saver scheme. Yeah. Another good bit of language there, yeah, super saver so scheme. Yeah, a, a new scheme announced by the government a year was a year or two ago yeah, it's probably two years ago um, this is but they didn't recently. really give much information with it so yeah. it's uh not widely known about so it's definitely something we'll be digging into in the future yeah right it's just loosely it's uh, the ability to put some money in super to take advantage of the tax and the uh, earning potential yeah. super and then take it out to buy your first home but of course there's so many rules oh. around when you can take it out how yeah. you can take it out so yeah. definitely just do some reading before you start saving <laughs> for your home you... deposit in your super. That's right. So many things can go wrong. Uh, and we'll, we maybe we'll even get like an expert on or some. We'll yeah, talk to definitely. someone for that. Um, okay. So as we come to the end, 
Uh, finally, how do we get money from Super? Okay, what do we do? I guess the, the best, most desirable option is just getting older and yeah. reaching that uh, super retirement age. <laughs> so, so the best outcome is that you have to wait like 40 yeah, years if so you're 20-something. That, that's 20 the, the most opti- optimal outcome and I guess the point is super. Yep. So you're getting to 65, 70, whatever the government makes the age at the time because they can change the goalposts whenever they want. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you're going to use that money to live off. Yep. Okay, and so these are called conditions of release yes and there's a few conditions of release one of them is obviously reaching what we call preservation age or retirement age another one is if you die which is probably not the best one yeah um there are some things like um financial hardship so if you have genuine financial hardship and this can be hard to qualify for people are always like ah, you know i need money to go to the movies well you're probably not going to get money from soon for that but you can potentially wiggle your way in to get some super i've seen it done yeah but we have a probably a better way to deal with that sort of situation which is see a financial counselor Mm. and we've got links to those in the show notes um the other thing is you can if you have a terminal illness or you're incapacitated so you can't work yeah those are all reasons oh income protection which is like a steady stream of money coming out but they're all insurances you don't want it to any of those things to happen to you so pretty much you've got to wait Mm. And ultimately, that's a big reason. All of these things, like waiting that long, is a big reason why I don't do a lot of my investing inside super. Yeah. And I I guess myself, I don't want to be working until 65, 70. So that's why I do quite a bit of investing outside of super. But um, but you also have the regular yeah, contributions. Yeah, it's definitely important to think about your superannuation. And it's a good thing to just let it tick away in the background. For sure. Um, just knowing what it is and where it is. Yeah, that's right. It's If you think about it, after your house, your super is probably the biggest thing in your financial life. Yeah. So it's worth taking at least a you know a few minutes to look yeah. at it. If it could mean the difference between you know a hundred thousand having a hundred thousand and not having a hundred thousand by yeah. the time you retire, if you, it takes you four hours to do it, it's worth it. And just picking a good fund now and picking low mm. fees now and then setting it up for life, and you it can really make a difference in your retirement. For sure, absolutely, and we have. I think we'll provide some links to some like compound interest calculators. Yeah. This is like when they work their magic. <laughs> if the, You'll be able to see the change in like 1% over yeah. a very long period of time. It has a huge impact. And I guess that is some see the benefit of super and just the fact that you're not able to touch it or muck around with it. Yeah. Um, it's it's a good way to just have it going. By all means, I think super is a great way to save and invest if you just – you can't be bothered with investing. Yeah. Like seriously, like you got other things to do. You want to knit like, or I'm whatever, just working. go do that working full-time until that age and that's cool yeah yeah just use super it's a really effective way to do it um it's okay action points from this what can what can people take away from this episode uh work out if you've been paying paid super currently and if so where it's going make sure you've got login details and you can go in and check that your employer is actually paying your super don't take their Um, word for it (laughs) definitely not um i think another important thing is to make sure you've cleared up all your supers rolling around the earth. Um, so mm-hmm. make sure you um, don't have too many lost funds out there. It's like billions of dollars, the government says. That's right. There is billions un- of dollars. Just super funds. That Unclaimed are just, money. Yeah. People forget about. A lot of people, yeah. you have a lot of small part-time jobs during uni and um, at the start of your career. So they just end up having super funds all over mm-hmm. the place. So roll them over together. Pick pick your fund. Um, we'll put some comparison websites in the comment. Uh, sorry, the show notes. Um, so that's important. And then um, work out if you do want to add any work, find how to do that. Yeah, the best way to do that. You know, you can talk to your accountant particularly. If, yep. Particularly if you're earning a decent wage, it's good to talk to your accountant first. Yeah. Uh, then we talked about partners. Yes. And splitting um, and that's or equalization. Def- definitely something you want to talk to a professional about because it's so yes. unique on every situation. Yep. And you can call your um, super fund for that. So you can get advice from them or you can go direct to a financial planner. And the easiest way to get money out of super, Kate? Well, I hope for you it's just reaching the preservation Thank age. Thank you. I hope that's <laughs> for you too. Okay. So how can people ask us questions if they want to? Um, I'm available like on Twitter at HowToMoneyAustralia and www.HowToMoney.online. And Owen? Uh, Owen Rask. It's Owen, R-A-S-K, on Twitter. And www.RaskFinance.com. And we also have a contact form there where you can submit a question. All right. Cool. Well, here's to having super supers. Super supers. Thanks, Kate. (laughs) 